Hi guys, so Marc Francois, a leading member of the ERG, stood up in Parliament on Wednesday during the Brexit debate and he delivered what he calls a speech and what I call a massive insult to the British people, to Europeans living in the UK, to British people living in Europe and finally to the Scottish people. Let's hear what he had to say. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, for allowing me to participate in this historic debate today. Thanks to this agreement, on New Year's Eve, we will finally leave the European Union forever. Um, no, Mark, I don't think you'll be living forever. I'm sorry to be a bit of a stick in the mud, but it's likely that the UK will rejoin the European Union at some stage. Now, whether it will be in the next five years, I don't think so. It could be in the next 10 years. It could be in the next 20 years. But to say forever... I don't think this statement is going to date very is going to age very well. So perhaps Big Ben will bong for Brexit after all. <laughs> Mark Francois had suggested that he was going to climb up Mount, uh, Big Ben and bong for Brexit. Um, he didn't do that. Was that a lie? <laughs> Nigel Farage memorably said last week, "The war is over." The war is over. I'm sorry to be interrupting him so often, but the war is over. Who were you at, at war with? Because the European Union were not at war with the UK. The European Union never said, you're not allowed to leave. They said, we would, we would prefer you to stay. But the European Union never stood in the way of Brexit. Who were you at war with? Unless you're talking about at war with your own people. People who presented the facts that the UK was going to suffer, that individual members of the country would suffer, citizens would suffer, the poor, the working class would suffer. So are you at, at war with those people or are you at war with the European Union who was not at war with you? Well, at some times, as you will well remember, Mum, it has felt like a war in this place. So perhaps we should now take on board the advice of the prophet Isaiah who said, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their, sorry, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war. And Why are you talking about war? There was war, now there's peace. Who were you at war with? Anymore. In that case, perhaps I and my Spartan friends <laughs> I'm sorry. When I think of a Spartan, I think of Marc Francois in a, in a loincloth, yes. Should now lower our spears too, but perhaps keep them to hand, just in case one day someone, perhaps the leader of the opposition, should try and take us back in. Why, why would you have a problem with taking the UK back in if it was, if it was a democratic vote? You keep talking about democracy, you know, the people voted to leave. If the people voted to rejoin, would you have a problem with that, Marc Francois? My colleagues in the European Research Group have fought long and hard for this day, and we have sometimes been lampooned or even vilified by the Remain-dominated electronic media for our trouble. When all we have ever wanted is one thing. To live in a free country. Uh, you live in a free country. That elects its own government. In, you live in that country. It does elect its own government. You are sitting in an elected parliament. You were elected by the people. And makes its own laws here in parliament. <laughs> You're sitting, standing, sorry, in parliament on the very day that a law has been made. Now, maybe Marc Francois has been asleep for the, since the beginning of his life and he doesn't understand that Parliament makes laws. How the hell did this guy become an MP if he doesn't understand that Parliament makes laws? And then lives under them in peace. Once again, how is this relevant to the European Union? You make your own laws and you live under those laws. Are you suggesting that the UK government has no power? 
that the police don't have any powers to arrest people, for example, if they break the law. Well, now, thanks to the Prime Minister, who kept his word to the country and got Brexit done. <laughs> Which promise was that? The one back last year when he said Brexit will be done in January. You vote for this, vote for the withdrawal agreement and Brexit is done. Or are you talking about the the on and off deal that's been happening since uh, last year? Who did exactly what it said on the tin. <laughs> what did it say on the tin, Mark? <laughs> As our Star Chamber has verified, we can do that. So what I call the battle for Brexit is now over. The battle for Brexit. Uh, the battle against whom? We won. What did you win? Mark, I would like you to tell us what did you win? Because when I think about Brexit, I think about people not being able to travel to, to travel uh, freely to the to the EU. People are not able to move there, to start a job there, to start a business there freely. They're not able to uh, to move there and be with loved ones freely. What did they what did those people win? You, you took that right away from them. They had that right. It was taken away from them. What did they win? But I suspect the battle for the union is now about to begin. We're about to write a new chapter in what Sir Winston Churchill called our island story. But now, after a truly epic struggle, we will do it as a free people. Despite all the brickbats we have endured for years, and I think particularly of my friend, the member for Stone, it was always worth the fight. This is insulting to the British people. This is insulting to the Europeans who live in Europe, in the UK, and the U UK citizens who live in Europe. They have been completely abandoned by the British government. And this is frankly insulting to those people. And Deputy Speaker, Mel Gibson once made a very entertaining film. But this is cry freedom for real. And now, finally, it's true. The final insult to the Scottish people. You know, this is the equivalent of <laughs> going to India and, telling, and using a speech by Gandhi to promote the British Empire, basically. <laughs> you know, to use a, a symbol of freedom I, of course, Mel Gibson is not the, the symbol of freedom in Scotland. Mel Gibson was playing the character, was playing a character who was basically, basically ba sorry, loosely based on um, William Wallace. But this idea of crying freedom, freedom from what, Marc Francois? And it's frankly insulting that the Scottish people who voted against this Actually, before, let's take a step back. The Scottish people were lied to and tricked into voting f to stay in the UK in order to stay in the European Union. And then just a few years later, were thrown under a bus by the Conservative Party and the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats. Then what happened was the, the Scottish people voted to stay in the European Union. That vote was ignored. Their request was ignored. Then the, the, the Scottish government tried to mitigate the damage of Brexit, tried to meet with Boris Johnson to mitigate the damage of Brexit. They, they were ignored. And finally, you have this idiot stand up in Parliament, insult the British people, insult Europe, insult Europeans. Talk about war, talk about winning. And then finally, insult the Scottish people by using a figure of Scottish history who wanted to free Scotland from English rule and turn it around and say, this is actually what we wanted all, all along. To free England from European rule, which does not make any sense whatsoever. So I'm quite animated here because I think this is frankly insulting to everyone. 
the idea that there was some sort of war, the idea that the British people are better off in some way because of Brexit, and somehow that Boris Johnson has kept his word. I don't know what else to say. Let me know in the comments section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?